And now, chapter 15 of the Madhya Leela, the Lord accepts Prasad at the house of Sarvagoma Bhattacharya. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda While Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was accepting prasad at the house of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, Amoga criticized him. At that time, the Lord also showed how much he was obliged to his devotees. All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Lord Nityananda Prabhu. All glories to Advaita Chandra. And all glories to all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya. All glories to the listeners of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita who have accepted it as their life and soul. While Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stayed at Jagannath Puri, he constantly enjoyed chanting and dancing with his devotees. In the beginning, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw the deity of Lord Jagannath in the temple. He offered him obeisances and prayers and danced and sang before him. After visiting the temple, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would remain outside during the Upala Bhog offering. He would then go meet Haridas Thakur and return to his residence. Sitting in his room, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would chant on his beads and Advaita Prabhu would come there to worship the Lord. While worshipping Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Advaita Charya would offer him scented water to wash his mouth and feet. Then Advaita Charya would smear very fragrant sandalwood pulp all over his body. Sri Advaita Prabhu would also place a flower garland around the Lord's neck and tulsi flowers or manjaris on his head. Then with folded hands, Advaita Charya would offer obeisances and prayers unto the Lord. After being worshipped by Advaita Charya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would take the dish containing flowers and tulsi and, with whatever paraphernalia remained, would also worship Advaita Charya. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would worship Advaita Charya by chanting the mantra, Whatever you are, you are but I offer my respects unto you. In addition, the Lord would make some sounds within his mouth that would make Advaita Charya laugh. In this way, both Advaita Charya and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would offer their respectful obeisances unto one another. Then Advaita Charya would extend invitations to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again and again. Indeed, Sri Advaita Charya's invitation is another wonderful story. It has been very vividly described by Vrindavan Das Thakur. Since Advaita Charya's invitation has been described by Vrindavan Das Thakur, I shall not repeat the story. However, I shall say that other devotees also extended invitations to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Every day, one devotee after another would invite Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and other devotees to lunch and would also hold a festival. All the devotees remained at Jagannath Puri for four continuous months and they observed all Lord Jagannath's festivals with great pleasure. The devotees also celebrated the festival of Janmashtami, Krishna's birthday, which is called Nanda Mahotsava, the festival of Nanda Maharaj. At that time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees dressed themselves as cowherd boys. 
Having dressed up like cowherd boys, all the devotees carried pots of milk and yogurt balanced on rods over their shoulders. Thus they all arrived at the festival grounds, chanting the holy name of Hari. Kanani Kutia dressed himself like Nanda Maharaj, and Jagannath Mahiti dressed himself as Mother Yashoda. At that time, King Prataparudra was also personally present with Kashi Mishra, Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya, and Tulsi Padichapatra. As usual, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced jubilantly. Everyone was covered with milk, yogurt, and yellow turmeric water. It was at this time that Srila Advaitacharya said, Please do not be angry. I speak the truth. I shall know whether you are a cowherd boy only if you can wheel this rod about. Accepting Advaitacharya's challenge, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took a big rod and began to wheel it around and around. Again and again he threw the rod into the sky and caught it when it fell. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wheeled and threw the rod, sometimes over his head, sometimes behind his back, sometimes in front of him, and sometimes to his side and sometimes between his legs. Indeed, all the people laughed to see this. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu whirled the rod in a circle like a firebrand, the heart of everyone who saw it was astonished. Nityananda Prabhu also played at whirling the rod. Who can understand how they were ecstatically immersed in the deep emotions of the cowherd boys? Following the orders of Maharaj Prataparudra, the temple superintendent named Tulsi brought one of Lord Jagannath's used clothes. This valuable cloth was wrapped around the head of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The other devotees, headed by Advaita Charya, also had cloths wrapped about their heads. In ecstasy, Kanani Kutia, who is dressed as Nanda Maharaj, and Jagannath Mahiti, who is dressed as Mother Yashoda, distributed all the riches they had stocked at home. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was greatly satisfied to see this. Accepting them both as his father and mother, he offered them obeisances. In great ecstasy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returned to his residence. In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, known as Goranga Sundara, performed various pastimes. On the victory day celebrating the conquest of Lanka, a day known as Vijaya Dashami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dressed up all his devotees like monkey soldiers. Displaying the emotions of Hanuman, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took up a large tree branch and, mounting the walls of the Lanka fort, began to dismantle it. In the ecstasy of Hanuman, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu angrily said, Where is the rascal Robin? He has kidnapped the universal mother Sita. Now I shall kill him and all his family. Everyone became astonished to see the emotional ecstasy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And everyone began to chant, All glories, all glories, again and again. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees participated in all the festivals known as Rasa Yatra, Diwali, and Uttana Dvadashi. One day the two brothers, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu, consulted one another sitting together in a solitary place. No one could understand what the brothers discussed between themselves, but later all the devotees could guess what the subject was. Thereafter, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called for all the devotees and asked them to return to Bengal. In this way, he bade farewell to them. Bidding farewell to all the devotees, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested them to return to Jagannath Puri every year to see him and then see the cleansing of the Gundicha temple. With great respect, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested Advaitacharya 
Give Krishna consciousness, devotion to Krishna, even to the lowest of men or the chandalas, such as the dog eaters. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered Nityananda Prabhu, Go to Bengal and without restriction manifest devotional service to the Lord or Krishna consciousness. Nityananda Prabhu was given assistance like Ram Das, Gadadhar Das, and several others. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I give them to you to assist you. I shall also go to see you at intervals. Keeping myself invisible, I shall watch you dance. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then embraced Srivas Pandit and with his arm about his neck began to speak to him in sweet words. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested Srivas Thakur, Perform congregational chanting daily and be assured that I shall also dance in your presence. You will be able to see this dancing, but not others. And take this prasad of Lord Jagannath's and this cloth and deliver them to my mother Sachi Devi. After offering her obeisances, please request her to excuse my offenses. I have given up the service of my mother and have accepted the sannyas order. Actually, I should not have done this, for by doing so I have destroyed my religious principles. I am subordinate to the love of my mother, and it is my duty to serve her in return. Instead of doing so, I have accepted this renounced order. Certainly this is the act of a madman. A mother is not offended by her mad son, and knowing this, my mother is not offended by me. I had no business in accepting the renounced order and sacrificing my love for my mother, which is my real property. Actually, I was in a crazy state of mind when I accepted sannyas. I am staying here at Jagannath Puri, Nilachal, to comply with her orders. However, at intervals, I shall go see her lotus feet. Indeed, I go there daily to see her lotus feet. She is able to feel my presence, although she does not believe it to be true. One day my mother Shachi offered food to Shaligram Vishnu. She offered rice cooked from shali patties, various kinds of vegetables, spinach, curry made of banana flowers, fried patola with nimble leaves, pieces of ginger with lemon, and also yogurt, milk, sugar candy, and many other foods. Taking the food upon her lap, mother was crying to think that all that food was very dear to her Nimai. My mother was thinking, Nimai is not here. Who will accept all this food? As she meditated upon me in this way, her eyes filled with tears. While she was thus thinking and crying, I immediately went there with great haste and ate everything. Seeing the dish empty, she wiped her tears away. She then began to wonder, who had eaten all that food? Why is the plate empty, she wondered, doubting that Balagopal had eaten it all. She began to wonder whether there was actually anything on the plate in the first place. Then again she thought that some animal might have come and eaten everything. She thought, perhaps by mistake I did not put any food on the plate. So thinking, she went into the kitchen and saw the pots. When she saw that all the pots were still filled with rice and vegetables, there was some doubt in her mind, and she was astonished. Thus wondering, she called Ishan, the servant, and had the place cleansed again. She then offered another plate to Gopal. Now whenever she prepares some good cooked food and wants to feed it to me, she cries in great anxiety. Being obliged by her love, I am brought there to eat. Mother knows all these things internally and feels happiness, but externally she does not accept them. Such an incident took place on the last Vijaya Dashami day. You can ask her about this incident and thus make her believe that I actually go there. While describing all this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a little overwhelmed, but just to finish bidding farewell to the devotees, he remained patient. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu next spoke some relishable words to Raghava Pandit. He said, I am obliged to you due to your pure love for me. 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then informed everyone, just hear about the pure devotional service rendered to Krishna by Raghava Pandit. Indeed, Raghava Pandit's service is supremely pure and highly accomplished. Apart from other commodities, just hear about his coconut offering. A coconut is sold at the rate of five gandhas each. Although he already has hundreds of trees and millions of fruits, he is still very eager to hear about the place where sweet coconut is available. He collects coconut with great endeavor from a place twenty miles away, and he gives four panas each for them. Every day five to seven coconuts are clipped and put into water to keep cool. At the time of offering bog, the coconuts are again clipped and cleansed. After holes are made in them, they are offered to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna used to drink the juice from these coconuts, and sometimes the coconuts were left drained of juice. At other times, the coconuts were filled with juice. When Raghava Pandit saw that the juice had been drunk from the coconuts, he was very pleased. He would then break the coconut, take out the pulp, and put it on another plate. After offering the pulp, he would meditate outside the temple door. In the meantime, Lord Krishna, having eaten the pulp, would leave the plate empty. Sometimes, after eating the pulp, Krishna would fill the plate again with new pulp. In this way, Raghava Pandit's faith increases, and he floats in an ocean of love. One day it so happened that about ten coconuts were properly clipped and brought by a servant to offer to the deity. When the coconuts were brought, there was little time to offer them because it was already late. The servant, holding the container of coconuts, remained standing at the door. Raghava Pandit then saw that the servant touched the ceiling above the door and then touched the coconuts with the same hand. Raghava Pandit then said, People are always coming and going through that door. The dust from their feet blows up and touches the ceiling. After touching the ceiling above the door, you have touched the coconut. Now they are no longer fit to be offered to Krishna because they are contaminated. Such was the service of Raghava Pandit. He did not accept the coconuts but threw them over the wall. His service is purely based on unalloyed love and it conquers the whole world. Thereafter Raghava Pandit had other coconuts gathered, cleansed and clipped and with great attention he offered them to the deity to eat. In this way he collected excellent bananas, mangoes, oranges, jackfruits and whatever first-class fruits from distant villages he had heard about. All these fruits were collected from distant places and were bought at a high price. After trimming them with great care and purity, Raghava Pandit offered them to the deity. Thus, with great care and attention, Raghava Pandit would prepare spinach, other vegetables, radishes, fruits, chip rice, powdered rice, and sweetmeats. He prepared cakes, sweet rice, concentrated milk, and everything else with great attention, and the cooking conditions were purified so that the food was first class and tasteful. Raghava Pandit would also offer all kinds of pickles, such as kashamdi. He offered various scents, garments, ornaments, and the best of everything. Thus Raghava Pandit would serve the Lord in an incomparable way. Everyone was very satisfied just to see him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then mercifully embraced Raghava Pandit. The Lord also offered all the other devotees a reception with similar respect. The Lord also respectfully told Shivananda Sain, Take care of Vasudev Dutt very nicely. Vasudev Dutt is very liberal. Every day, whatever income he receives, he spends. He does not keep any balance. Being a householder, Vasudev Dutt needs to save some money. Because he is not doing so, it is very difficult for him to maintain his family. Please take care of Vasudat's family affairs. Become his manager and make the proper adjustments. Come every year and bring all the devotees with you to the Gundicha festival. I also request you to maintain all of them. The Lord then, with great respect, 
extended an invitation to all the inhabitants of Kulina Gram, asking them to come every year and bring silken rope to carry Lord Jagannath during the Ratha Yatra festival. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said, Gunaraj Khan of Kulina Gram compiled a book named Sri Krishna Vijay, in which there is a sentence revealing the author's ecstatic love of Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj, is my life and soul. By this statement I am sold into the hands of the descendants of Gunaraj Khan. To say nothing of you, even a dog living in your village is very dear to me. What then to speak of others? After this, Ramananda Basu and Satyaraj Khan both submitted questions at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Satyaraj Khan said, My dear Lord, being a householder and a materialistic man, I do not know the process of advancing in spiritual life. I therefore submit myself unto your lotus feet and request you to give me orders. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, Without cessation, continue chanting the holy name of Lord Krishna. Whenever possible, serve him and his devotees, the Vaishnavas. Upon hearing this, Satyaraj said, How can I recognize the Vaishnav? Please let me know what a Vaishnav is. What are his common symptoms? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Whoever chants the holy name of Krishna just once is worshipable and is the topmost human being. Simply by chanting the holy name of Krishna, one is relieved from all the reactions of a sinful life. One can complete the nine processes of devotional service simply by chanting the holy name. One does not have to undergo initiation or execute the activities required before initiation. One simply has to vibrate the holy name with his lips. Thus, even a man in the lowest class or a chandala can be delivered. By chanting the holy name of the Lord, one dissolves his entanglement in material activities. After this, one becomes very attracted to Krishna, and thus dormant love for Krishna is awakened. The holy name of Lord Krishna is an attractive feature for many saintly liberal people. It is the annihilator of all sinful reactions, and is so powerful that save for the dumb who cannot chant it, it is readily available to everyone, including the lowest type of man, the Chandala. The holy name of Krishna is the controller of the opulence of liberation, and it is identical with Krishna. Simply by touching the holy name with one's tongue, immediate effects are produced. Chanting the holy name does not depend on initiation, pious activities, or the Puras Charya regulative principles generally observed before initiation. The holy name does not wait for all these activities. It is self-sufficient. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then finally advised, One who is chanting the Hare Krishna mantra is understood to be a Vaishnava. Therefore you should offer all respects to him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then turned his attention to three persons, Mukunda Das, Raghunandan and Sri Narahari, inhabitants of the place called Kanda. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the son of Mother Shachi, next asked Mukunda Das, You are the father and your son is Raghunandan, is that so? Or is Srila Raghunandan your father, whereas you are his son? Please let me know the facts, so that my doubts will go away. Mukunda replied, Raghunandan is my father, and I am his son. This is my decision. All of us have attained devotion to Krishna due to Raghunandan. Therefore, in my mind, he is my father. Hearing Mukunda Das give his proper decision, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu confirmed it, saying, Yes, it is correct. One who awakens devotion to Krishna is certainly a spiritual master. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became very happy just to speak of the glories of his devotees. Indeed, when he spoke of their glories, it was as if he had five faces.
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then informed all his devotees, Please hear about Mukunda's love of Godhead. It is a very deep and pure love and can only be compared with purified gold. Mukunda Das externally appears to be a royal physician engaged in governmental service, but internally he has a deep love for Krishna. Who can understand his love? One day Mukunda Das, the royal physician, was seated with the Mohammedan king on a high platform and was telling the king about medical treatment. While the king and Mukunda Das were conversing, a servant brought a fan made of peacock feathers to shade the head of the king from the sun. Consequently, he held the fan above the king's head. Just by seeing the peacock feather fan, Mukunda Das became absorbed in ecstatic love of Godhead and fell from the high platform onto the ground. The king, fearing that the royal physician was killed, personally descended and brought him to his consciousness. When the king asked Mukunda, Where is it paining you? Mukunda replied, I am not very much pained. The king then inquired, Mukunda, why did you fall down? Mukunda replied, My dear king, I have a disease that is like epilepsy. Being extraordinarily intelligent, the king could understand the whole affair. In his estimation, Mukunda was a most uncommon, exalted, liberated personality. Raghunandan is constantly engaged in serving the temple of Lord Krishna. Beside the entrance of the temple is a lake, and on its banks is a kadamba tree, which daily delivers two flowers to be used for Krishna's service. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again spoke to Mukunda with sweet words. Your duty is to earn both material and spiritual wealth. Furthermore, it is the duty of Raghunandan to always engage in Lord Krishna's service. He has no other intention but the service of Lord Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then ordered Nadahari, I wish you to remain here with my devotees. In this way, the three of you should always execute these three duties for the service of the Lord. Out of his causeless mercy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the following directions to the brothers Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and Vidya Bhachaspati. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, In this age of Kali, Krishna is manifest in two forms, wood and water. Thus he helps conditioned souls to become liberated by seeing the wood and bathing in the water. Lord Jagannath is the Supreme Lord Himself in the form of wood, and the river Ganges is the Supreme Lord Himself in the form of water. Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya, you should engage in the worship of Lord Jagannath Purushottam, and Bhachaspati should worship Mother Ganges. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then embraced Morari Gupta and began to speak about his firm faith in devotional service. This was heard by all the devotees. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Previously, I induced Morari Gupta again and again to be allured by Lord Krishna. I said to him, My dear Gupta, Lord Sri Krishna Prajendra Kumara is the supreme sweetness. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the origin of all incarnations and the source of everything. He is pure transcendental love itself, and He is the reservoir of all pleasure. Krishna is the reservoir of all transcendental qualities. He is like a mine of gems. He is expert at everything, very intelligent and sober, and He is the summit of all humors. His character is very sweet and his pastimes are melodious. He is expert in intelligence, and thus he enjoys all his pastimes and mellows. I then requested Morari Gupta, Worship Krishna and take shelter of him. But for his service, nothing appeals to the mind. In this way he heard from me again and again. By my influence his mind was a little converted. Morari Gupta then replied, I am your servant and your order carrier. 
I have no independent existence. After this, Morari Gupta went home and spent the whole night thinking how he would be able to give up the association of Raghunath, Lord Ramachandra. Thus he was overwhelmed. Morari Gupta then began to pray at the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra. He prayed that death would come that night because it was not possible for him to give up the service of the lotus feet of Raghunath. Thus Morari Gupta cried the entire night. There was no rest for his mind, therefore he could not sleep, but stayed awake the entire night. In the morning Morari Gupta came to see me. Catching hold of my feet and crying, he submitted an appeal. Morari Gupta said, I have sold my head to the lotus feet of Raghunath. I cannot withdraw my head, for that would give me too much pain. It is not possible for me to give up the service of Raghunath's lotus feet. At the same time, if I do not do so, I shall break your order. So what can I do? In this way, Morari Gupta appealed to me, saying, Kindly grant me this mercy, because you are all merciful. Let me die before you, so that all my doubts will be finished. Hearing this, I became very happy. I then raised Morari Gupta and embraced him. I said to him, All glories to you, Morari Gupta. Your method of worship is very firmly fixed, so much so that even upon my request your mind did not turn. The servitor must have love and affection for the lotus feet of the Lord, exactly like this. Even if the Lord wants separation, a devotee cannot abandon the shelter of his lotus feet. Just to test your firm faith in your Lord, I requested you again and again to change your worship from Lord Ramchandra to Krishna. In this way I congratulated Morari Gupta, saying, Indeed, you are the incarnation of Hanuman. Consequently, you are the eternal servant of Lord Ramchandra. Why should you give up the worship of Lord Ramchandra and his lotus feet? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued, I accept this Morari Gupta as my life and soul. When I hear of his humility, it perturbs my very life. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then embraced Vasudev Dutt and began to speak of his glories as if he had a thousand mouths. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu glorified him, Vasudev Dutt immediately became very embarrassed and shy. He then submitted himself, touching the Lord's lotus feet. Vasudev Dutt told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, My dear Lord, you incarnate just to deliver all conditioned souls. I have now one petition which I wish you would accept. My Lord, you are certainly capable of doing whatever you like, and you are indeed merciful. If you so desire, you can very easily do whatever you want. My Lord, my heart breaks to see the sufferings of all conditioned souls. Therefore, I request you to transfer the karma of their sinful lives upon my head. My dear Lord, let me suffer perpetually in a hellish condition, accepting all the sinful reactions of all living entities. Please finish their diseased material life. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard Vasudev Dutt's statement, his heart became very soft. Tears flowed from his eyes, and he began to tremble. In a faltering voice, he spoke as follows. Accepting Vasudev Dutt as a great devotee, the Lord said, Such a statement is not at all astonishing, because you are the incarnation of Prahlad Maharaj. It appears that Lord Krishna has bestowed complete mercy upon you. There is no doubt about it. Whatever a pure devotee wants from his master, Lord Krishna doubtlessly grants, because he has no duty other than to fulfill the desire of his devotee. If you desire the deliverance of all living entities within the universe, then all of them can be delivered even without your undergoing the tribulations of sinful activity. Krishna is not incapable, for he has all potencies. Why would he induce you to suffer the sinful reactions of other living entities? 
whosever welfare you desire immediately becomes a Vaishnav. And Krishna delivers all Vaishnavs from the reaction of their past sinful activities. As it is said in the Brahma Samhita, Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the original personality of Godhead, Govinda, who regulates the sufferings and enjoyments of fruitive activity for everyone, from the heavenly king Indra down to the smallest insect. That very personality of Godhead destroys the fruitive karma of one engaged in devotional service. Because of your honest desire, all living entities within the universe will be delivered, for Krishna does not have to do anything to deliver all the living entities of the universe. Just as there are millions of fruits on the Udumbara tree, millions of universes float on the waters of the river Viraja. The Udumbara tree is filled with millions of fruits, and if one falls down and is destroyed, the tree does not even consider the loss. In the same way, if one universe is vacated due to the living entities having been liberated, that is a very little thing for Krishna. He does not take it very seriously. The entire spiritual world constitutes the unlimited opulence of Krishna, and there are innumerable Vaikuntha planets there. The causal ocean is considered the surrounding waters of Vaikuntha Loka. Maya and her unlimited material universes are situated in that causal ocean. Indeed, Maya appears to be floating like a pot filled with mustard seeds. Of the millions of mustard seeds floating in that pot, if one seed is lost, the loss is not at all significant. Similarly, if one universe is lost, it is not significant to Lord Krishna. To say nothing of one universal mustard seed, even if all the universes and the material energy or maya are destroyed, Krishna does not even consider the loss. If a person possessing millions of wish-fulfilling cows loses one she-goat, he does not consider the loss. Krishna owns all six opulences in full. If the entire material energy is destroyed, what does he lose? As the personified Vedas say in the Srimad Bhagavatam, O my Lord, O unconquerable one, O master of all potencies, please exhibit your internal potency to conquer the nescience of all moving and inert living entities. Due to nescience, they accept all kinds of faulty things, thus provoking a fearful situation. O Lord, please show your glories. You can do this very easily for your internal potency is beyond the external potency, and you are the reservoir of all opulence. You are also the demonstrator of the material potency. You are also always engaged in your pastimes in the spiritual world. You exhibit your reserved internal potency, and sometimes exhibit the external potency by glancing over it. Thus you manifest your pastimes. The Vedas confirm your two potencies and accept both types of pastimes due to them. In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu described the good qualities of his devotees one after another. He then embraced them and bade them farewell. Due to the impending separation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all the devotees began to cry. The Lord was also morose due to separation from the devotees. Gadadhar Pandit remained with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he was given a place to live at Yamashvar. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu remained at Jagannath Puri or Nilachal with Parmananda Puri, Jagadananda, Svarup Damodar, Damodar Pandit, Govinda and Kashishvar. It was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's daily business to see Lord Jagannath in the morning. One day Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya came before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with folded hands and submitted a request. Since all the Vaishnavas had returned to Bengal, there was a good chance that the Lord would accept an invitation. 
Sarvabuma Bhattacharya said, Please accept my invitation for lunch for one month. The Lord replied, That is not possible because it is against the religious principles of a sannyasi. Sarvabuma then said, Then please accept the invitation for twenty days. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, It is not a religious principle of the renounced order. When Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya requested Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to accept lunch for fifteen days, the Lord said, I shall accept lunch at your place for one day only. Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya then caught hold of the Lord's lotus feet and submissively begged, Please accept lunch for at least ten days. In this way, by and by, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reduced the duration to five days. Thus, for five days, he regularly accepted the invitation to lunch. After this, Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya said, My Lord, there are ten sannyasis with you. Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya then submitted that Parmananda Puri Goswami should accept a five-day invitation at his place. This was settled before the Lord. Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya said, Ramadas Swarup is my intimate friend. He will come sometimes with you and sometimes alone. The other eight sannyasis will accept invitation for two days each. In this way, there will be engagements for each and every day during the entire month. If all the sannyasis come together, it would not be possible for me to pay them proper respects. Therefore, I would be an offender. Sometimes you will come alone to my place, and sometimes you will be accompanied by Svarup Tamada. Having this arrangement confirmed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Bhattacharya became very glad and immediately invited the Lord to his house on that very day. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya's wife was known as the mother of Sati. She was a great devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and she was affectionate like a mother. After returning to his home, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya gave orders to his wife. His wife, known as Satira Mata, the mother of Sati, began cooking with great pleasure. At Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya's house, there was always a full stock of food. Whatever spinach, vegetable, fruit, and so on were required, he collected and brought back home. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya personally began to help his wife cook. His wife, the mother of Sati, was very experienced, and she knew how to cook nicely. On the southern side of the kitchen were two rooms for offering food, and in one of them the food was offered to Shalagram Narayan. The other room was for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lunch. The Lord's lunchroom was very secluded, and it was newly constructed by Bhattacharya. The room was so constructed that there was only one door as an entrance from the outside for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There was another door attached to the kitchen, and it was through this door that the food was brought. First, three manas of cooked rice, almost six pounds, was poured on a big banana leaf. Then the whole stack of rice was mixed with so much yellowish and fragrant clarified butter that it began to overflow the leaf. There were a number of pots made of bark and banana trees and the leaves of the kea plant. These pots were filled with various cooked vegetables and placed on all sides of the leaf. There were about ten kinds of spinach, a soup called sukta, which was made with bitter nimber leaves, a pungent preparation made with black pepper, a mild cake made of fried curd, and buttermilk mixed with small fried pieces of dal. There were preparations of dugda tumbi, dugda kusmanda, vesara, lapra, mocha ganta, mocha baja, and other vegetables. There were unlimited quantities of Rida Kuzmanda body, Pula body, fruits, and various roots. Other preparations included eggplant mixed with newly grown nimba leaves, fried together, light body, fried patola, and fried rounds of squash and pumpkin. There was a soup made with fried ura dal and mung dal, defeating nectar. There were also sweet chutney, 
and five or six kinds of sour preparations, beginning with badamala. There were barats made of mung dal, of ura dal, and of sweet bananas. And there was a sweet rice cake, coconut cake, and various other cakes. There was kanji butter, dugda chida, dugda laklaki, and various cakes which I am unable to describe. Sweet rice mixed with ghee was poured into an earthen pot and mixed with chanpa kala, condensed milk, and mango. Other preparations included a very delicious churn curd and a variety of sandesh sweetmeats. Indeed, all the various edibles available in Bengal and Orissa were prepared. Thus Bhattacharya prepared a great variety of food and spread a fine cloth over a white wooden platform. On two sides of the stack of food were pitchers filled with scented cold water. The flowers of the Tulsi tree were placed above the mound of rice. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya also included several types of food that had been offered to Lord Jagannath. This included sweet balls known as Amrita Gutika, sweet rice and cakes. All these were kept separately. When everything was ready, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there alone after finishing his midday duties. He knew the heart of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. After Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya washed the Lord's feet, the Lord entered the room to take his lunch. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a little astonished to see the gorgeous arrangement and gesturing he spoke to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. This is most uncommon. How is this arrangement of rice and vegetables finished within six hours? Even a hundred men cooking on a hundred ovens could not possibly finish all these preparations within so short a time. I hope the food has already been offered to Krishna, since I see there are tulsi flowers over the plates. <laughs> you are most fortunate, and your endeavor is successful, for you have offered such wonderful food to Radha Krishna. The color of the rice is so attractive. And its aroma is so good that it appears that Radha and Krishna have directly taken it. My dear Bhattacharya, your fortune is really very great. How much shall I praise you? I also am very fortunate to be able to take the remnants of this food. Take away Krishna's sitting place and put it aside. Then give me prasad on a different plate. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said, It is not so wonderful, my lord. Everything has been made possible by the energy and mercy of he who will eat the food. My wife and I did not especially exert ourselves in the cooking. He by whose power the food has been prepared knows everything. Now, please sit, sit in this place and take your lunch. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, This place is worshipable because it was used by Krishna. Bhattacharya said, both the food and the sitting place are the Lord's mercy. If you can eat the remnants of the food, what is the offense in your sitting in this place? Yes, you have spoken correctly. The Shastras enjoin that the devotee can partake of everything left by Krishna. In fact, it says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, My dear Lord, the garlands, scented substances, garments, ornaments, and other such things that have been offered to you may later be used by your servants. By partaking of these things and eating the remnants of food you have left, we will be able to conquer the illusory energy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said, There is so much food here that it is impossible to eat. Bhattacharya replied, I know how much you can eat. After all, at Jagannath Puri, you eat fifty-two times a day, and each time you eat hundreds of buckets filled with prasadam. At Vaka you keep 16,000 queens in 16,000 palaces. Also there are 18 mothers and numerous friends and relatives of the Yadhu dynasty. In Vrindavan you also have your father's elder brothers, your father's younger brothers, maternal uncles, husbands of your father's sisters and many cowherd men. There are also cowherd boyfriends and you eat twice a day morning and evening in the house of each and every one. Indeed, 
at the Govardhan Puja ceremony, you ate stacks of rice. In comparison to that, <laughs> this small quantity is not even a morsel for you. You are the supreme personality of Godhead, whereas I am a most insignificant living being. Therefore, you may accept a little quantity of food from my house. Hearing this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu smiled and sat down to eat. Bhattacharya, with great pleasure, first offered him the prasad from the Jagannath temple. At this time, Bhattacharya had a son-in-law named Amoga, who was the husband of his daughter named Sati. Although born in an aristocratic Brahmin family, this Amoga was a great fault-finder and blasphemer. Amoga wanted to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu eat, but he was not allowed to enter. Indeed, Bhattacharya guarded the threshold of his house with a stick in his hand. However, as soon as Bhattacharya began distributing prasad and was a little inattentive, Amoga came in. Seeing the quantity of food, he began to blaspheme. This much food is sufficient to satisfy ten or twelve men, but <laughs> this sannyasi alone is eating so much. As soon as Amoga said this, Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya turned his eyes upon him. Seeing Bhattacharya's attitude, Amoga immediately left. Bhattacharya ran after him to strike him with a stick, but Amoga fled so fast that Bhattacharya could not catch him. Bhattacharya then began to curse and call his son-in-law ill names. When Bhattacharya returned, he saw that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was laughing to hear him criticize Amoga. When Sati's mother, Bhattacharya's wife, heard of this incident, she immediately began to strike her head and chest, saying again, Let Sati become a widow! Seeing the lamentation of both husband and wife, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tried to pacify them. According to their desire, he ate the prasad and was very satisfied. <laughs> After Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu finished eating, Bhattacharya washed his mouth, hands and legs and offered him flavored spices, tulsi manjari, cloves and cardamom. The Bhattacharya then placed a flower garland over Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and smeared his body with sandalwood pulp. After offering obeisances, the Bhattacharya submitted the following humble statement. I brought you to my home just to have you blasphemed. This is a great offense. Please excuse me. I beg your pardon. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, What Amoga has said is correct. Therefore, it is not blasphemy. What is your offense? After saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left and returned to his residence. Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya also followed him. <laughs> Falling down at the Lord's feet, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said many things in self-reproach. The Lord then pacified him and sent him back to his home. After returning to his home, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya consulted with his wife, the mother of Sati. After personally condemning himself, he began to speak as follows. If the man who has blasphemed Sri Taitanya Mahaprabhu is killed, his sinful action may be atoned. Or if I give up my own life, this sinful action may be atoned. However, neither of these ideas are befitting because both bodies belong to Brahmins. Instead, I shall never see the face of that blasphemer. I reject him and give up his relationship. I shall never even speak his name. Inform my daughter Sati to abandon her relationship with her husband because he has fallen down. When the husband falls down, it is the wife's duty to relinquish the relationship. When the husband is fallen, his relationship must be given up. The 
And that night, Amoga, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya's son-in-law, fled, and in the morning he immediately fell sick with cholera. When Bhattacharya heard that Amoga was dying of cholera, he thought, It is the favor of providence that he is doing what I wanted to do. When one offends the supreme personality of Godhead, karma immediately takes effect. After saying this, he recited two verses from revealed scripture. In the Mahabharat, Bhima Sain said, What we have had to arrange with great endeavor by collecting elephants and horses, chariots and infantry soldiers has already been accomplished by the Gandhavas. And in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sukhdeva Goswami says, when a person mistreats great souls, his lifespan, opulence, reputation, religion, possessions, and good fortune, they are all destroyed. At this time, Gopinath Acharya went to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and the Lord asked him about the events taking place in Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya's house. Gopinath Acharya informed the Lord that both the husband and wife were fasting, and that their son-in-law, Amoga, was dying of cholera. As soon as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard that Amoga was going to die, he immediately ran to him in great haste. Placing his hand on Amoga's chest, he spoke as follows. The heart of a Brahmin is by nature very clean. Therefore, it is a proper place for Krishna to sit. Why have you allowed jealousy to sit here also? Because of this you have become like a Chandala, the lowest of men and you have also contaminated a most purified place, your heart. However, due to the association of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, all your contamination is now vanquished. When a person's heart is cleansed of all contamination, he is able to chant the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna. Therefore, Amoga, get up and chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. If you do so, Krishna will unfailingly bestow mercy upon you. After hearing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and being touched by him, Amoga, who was on his deathbed, immediately stood up and began to chant the holy names of Krishna. Thus he became mad with ecstatic love and began to dance emotionally. While Amoga danced in ecstatic love, he manifested all the ecstatic symptoms, trembling, tears, jubilation, trance, perspiration, and a faltering voice. Seeing these waves of ecstatic emotion, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to laugh. Amoga then fell before the Lord's lotus feet and submissively said, O oh, merciful Lord, please excuse my offense. Not only did Amoga beg the Lord's pardon, but he also began slapping his own cheek, saying, By this mouth I have blasphemed you. Indeed, Amoga continued slapping his face over and over until his cheeks were swollen. Finally, Gopinath Acharya stopped him by catching hold of his hands. After this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pacified Amoga by touching his body and saying, You are the object of my affection because you are the son-in-law of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Everyone in Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya's house is very dear to me, including his maids and servants, and even his dog. And what to speak of his relatives? Amoga, always chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and do not commit any further offenses. After giving Amoga this instruction, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Sarvabhoma's house. Upon seeing the Lord, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya immediately caught hold of his lotus feet. The Lord also embraced him and sat down. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pacified Sarvabhoma, saying, After all, Amoga, your son-in-law, is a child. So what is his fault? Why are you fasting and why are you angry? Just get up and take your bath and go see the face of Lord Jagannath. Then return here to eat your lunch. In this way I shall be happy. I shall stay here until you return to take Lord Jagannath's remnants for your lunch. 
Catching hold of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus feet, Bhattacharya said, Why did you bring Amoga back to life? It would have been better had he died. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Amoga is a child and your son. The father does not take the faults of his son seriously, especially when he is maintaining him. Now that he has become a Vaishnav, he is offenseless. You can bestow your mercy upon him without hesitation. Please go, my lord, to see Lord Jagannath. After taking my bath, I shall go there and then return. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then told Gopinath, Stay here and inform me when Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya has taken his prasad. After saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to see Lord Jagannath. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya completed his bath, went to see Lord Jagannath, and then returned to his house to accept food. Thereafter, Amoga became an unalloyed devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He danced in ecstasy and peacefully chanted the holy name of Lord Krishna. In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed his various pastimes. Whoever sees them or hears of them becomes truly astonished. Thus, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu enjoyed eating in Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya's house. Within that one pastime, many wonderful pastimes were manifest. These are the peculiar characteristics of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Thus the Lord ate in Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya's house, and in this way Sarvabhoma's love for the Lord has become well known. Thus I have related the ecstatic love of Sarvabhoma's wife, who is known as the mother of Sati. I have also related Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's great mercy, which he manifested by excusing Amoga's offense. He did so due to Amoga's relationship with a devotee. Whoever hears these pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with faith and love will attain the shelter of the Lord's lotus feet very soon. Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishna Das, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita following in their footsteps. <laughs> This ends Chapter 15 of the Madhya Leela. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya offers prasad to the Lord. <laughs>